Hello campers, Chris Bell here and welcome to the Easter edition of Cocktails with Chris and I'm very excited about this episode because we are going to continue our journey with rye whiskey as I told you last week but also I was very afraid that I was not going to get to wear my Easter sport coat this year because sane people are going to church. We're just watching it on video. But since I was going to be taping this, I realized uh, I could put it on. And this is the, the 10th anniversary uh, for this particular sport coat. And it turns out if you only wear a sport coat once or twice a year, uh, it stays in pretty good shape. And one of those times is always Easter Sunday. This coat has received more compliments for an Easter Sunday coat than any sport coat that has ever been made. I got it out of the Paul Frederick catalog, which is an amazing catalog because uh, whether you're a banker or a pimp, you can find something to suit your taste. Uh, and there's, there's some stories behind it, if you'll uh, allow me. Uh, my favorite being when I had first gotten the coat, I knew that I was going to be wearing it on Easter Sunday and we were out at a party and one of our wonderful gay friends, Rick Newland, was there and I told Rick, I said, on Easter Sunday, I'm going to be honorary gay because of the coat that I'm wearing. And he said, Easter Sunday, hell, we wait every Sunday to see what you're gonna be showing up in. And then my other favorite story regarding this coat, it was tailored by Carol's Cleaners, back when Carol's Cleaners uh, used to be located over on Gray Street and uh, it's still around, still a great cleaners and uh, tailoring shop. Uh, it's moved uh, over to, to Kirby Avenue, but when it was on Gray, you'd run into people over there all the time and I was going to pick up my coat and my friend Charles Flood, who also happens to be a big fan of Cocktails with Chris, uh, was in there picking up some uh, either alterations or laundry for his wife and he saw my coat come out and he looked at it and he said, why are you picking up Rusty Harden's laundry? And for those of you who don't live in Houston, Rusty Harden is a, a very well-known and very successful trial lawyer and he has front row tickets to the Houston Rockets and you can often see him because he'll be wearing a very loud yellow or some other loud colored uh, sport coat. So I've always thought that was quite funny. But let's get on with, with cocktails. Uh, like I said, we're going to continue with rye whiskey and today we're going to learn how uh, to make a Manhattan. And the Manhattan is one of the oldest drinks known to man. Uh, it was created, they think, back in the 1870s. No one's exactly sure uh, of its origin, but there seems to be some agreement that it uh, began in the Manhattan Club uh, in New York. You will read a, a lot of different recipes uh, for the Manhattan, and I, I'm here to tell you, you maybe don't want to rely uh, on all those recipes. A lot of them will tell you it's uh, two ounces of rye whiskey and an ounce or half ounce of vermouth, and some will say sweet vermouth, and some will say uh, dry vermouth. I had never really heard of the, the dry vermouth, but there are some recipes out there. Uh, also, a lot of times it'll say Italian vermouth, and I first time I made it, I thought, well, there's some dry vermouths that are Italian, and that's what I use, but Italian vermouth really means uh, sweet vermouth. And so over the years, while it did begin as a rye drink, uh, then, different versions started being made and a lot of people just made it with bourbon. Uh, so we're going to make it with both today. And uh, I want to give my, some thanks to my friend Russ Kempton. Uh, Russ, is, when, Russ was at the University of Texas when I was and he was actually uh, the, the Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer campus representative. And one of his um, greatest things that he ever did for humanity is that he got Paps Blue Ribbon to sponsor the first ever outdoor mud wrestling tournament uh, at the University of Texas. 
but he's gone on to even greater things and has become basically a libations uh, expert. And so another friend of mine, Brian Mickey, uh, told Russ about Cocktails with Chris and he looked at it and liked it and he said, well, let me help you out and I, I can send you some uh, great whiskeys and, and things to use. And, and Russ has his own business. It call, it's called Speaking of Grapes and Grains. Uh, you can find it on Facebook. Again, it's Speaking of Grapes and Grains and he has a website and I'll include a link to it on uh, this week's episode. Uh, but this is the, the rye whiskey that he recommended, and it's Ben Milam, and this is the bourbon he recommended, and it's Basil Hayden's. Uh, Basil Hayden's is a, a Kentucky bourbon. Uh, it is very popular, and it is also the favorite bourbon of Bill de Blasio's, Mayor Bill de Blasio's uh, former campaign manager. And Whoever can write in in the comments section and uh, tell me how I would know that uh, will win a free Cocktails with Chris t-shirt when and if we ever have Cocktails with Chris uh, t-shirts. But basically, oh, and the glass, the, you can make a Manhattan in different types of glass. Most of the time you will see it served in a martini glass. Um, sometimes you'll just see it in a plain old cocktail uh, glass like that. Uh, I'm going to use a, a hybrid, something sort of in between a martini and cocktail glass, and we're going to start with the bourbon version. And like I said, uh, I think this is the sweet vermouth, this is just martini and Rossi sweet vermouth, and I'm just going to put a little in there, um, because I think that when it comes to the vermouth, we're going to have uh, to use the, the Brill Cream method. And for the, those of you who too, are too young, the Brill Cream method means a little dabble do ya. And if you have trouble remembering that, I think after you hear this, you won't have trouble anymore. So, you can find um, the, the old Brill Cream theme song on YouTube. I'll also <laughs> provide a link to that. And I challenge you, if you can go through the rest of the day today and all day tomorrow without at some point uh, at least humming that little tune, brew cream, a little dabble do you, uh, you will also win a free Cocktails with Chris t-shirt when and if we ever have Cocktails with Chris t-shirt. So what I would suggest is that you just take the sweet vermouth and that you swirl it around uh, in the glass and and let that let that do and then I uh, throw it out and then you take a larger container like this serving pitcher put in <laughs> put in your ice and uh, two ounces two ounces of the bourbon. There's two ounces. And then almost every uh, recipe that I have seen calls for two dashes, two dashes of Augustura bitters, Augustura bitters. And then you take that and this is the greatest tool known to man, a stirrer, and you've seen them in every bar, and you can buy that on Amazon too. And you can just use it uh, for all sorts of things. And a couple weeks ago when we talked about martinis, and I made it very clear, you could have them shaken or stirred. Not so with the Manhattan. Only stir. You do not shake uh, the Manhattan. But you do stir it as best as you can as well as you possibly can. You can tell that it's getting rather cold by feeling down here and then just stir it a little bit more. And then you take it and see you have just a little bit, a very little bit of the bitters, or of the vermouth, the sweet vermouth left in the glass. And you strain it and you pour it in and then uh, you have a cherry. As garnish, maraschino cherry, 
and you can all do all sorts of fancy things with the cherries. You can put them on a toothpick and line them up. I've seen that. And then that's your Manhattan with bourbon. And that is very nice. It's, uh, it's going to be sweeter, obviously, with bourbon uh, than it is with rye. This is the, the Ben Milam uh, rye whiskey. Uh, according to Russ, it's a fantastic rye whiskey. I'm looking forward uh, to try, uh, trying it. It's named after uh, ben, Ly ben Milam, um, who was a hero of the uh, Texas Revolution. Uh, and anyway, Milam, the town is named after him. The county of Milam is named after him. Uh, and of course, um, Milam Avenue here in the city of Houston. Uh, it is named after. So same thing, um, remember a little dab will do you with uh, the, the sweet vermouth and like I said some say you can make a dry Manhattan by using a uh, dry vermouth and if you want to do that and it turns out the uh, vermouth is also very good for plants or at least we're going to see and so you leave that there and then uh, you take your your rye whiskey and uh, I'm going to use a different uh, measure and two ounces two ounces of that and then remember two shots of the August Stewart bitters which you can uh, buy at specs and the bitters are very important for the success of this drink and then plenty of ice And then, once again, stir it up, make sure it's good and cold, and there's my top, and you just take it, put it in the glass, another cherry, and oh my goodness, here we have the Manhattan made with rye. Much drier, uh, but delicious. A really great drink. Both of these, uh, you can't go wrong. The Basil Hayden's bourbon, a fantastic bourbon. Uh, the, the Ben Milam rye, uh, it's great. Like I said, you're gonna have other kinds of bourbon that you like and other kinds of, of rye that you like. And um, pick your favorite, uh, use the recipe. And um, again, on the vermouth, I think the real secret is uh, the Brill Cream Rule a little dab will do you. Uh, have a great Easter uh, and, uh, and a great rest of the weekend and I hope you'll be back next week uh, for another edition of Cocktails with Chris. Thanks for joining us.